So welcome to task one for module five of the Open Science MOOC on open research software and open source. This task will teach you the basics of how to set up your first repository on GitHub. So this task is designed primarily for students and researchers who want to create their first open source project, either software or non-software, on GitHub. GitHub is a place for you to come and play and experiment with new research workflows and is really just the beginning to help set the stage for your own pathways and ideas. Don't forget while you're here that you can also join the discussions over on our open Slack channel and please introduce yourself using the hashtag module5opensource and tell us a bit about who you are, your background and how you ended up here. Now, the estimated time to complete this task if you use the text-based version is about 30 to 45 minutes, but the time saving once complete should hopefully be unimaginable for each one of you as we improve your research workflows. To get started, a repository really is just a fancy name for a project on GitHub. GitHub itself is a place online where you can manage projects, store files, and openly collaborate with others. This is all achieved by using version control to track projects as they progress. As such, GitHub is a powerful tool for both software and non-software projects. One of the most important things to consider at this early stage though, is to think about how you want the wider community to interact with your project. As you are working in the open, you want to make sure that others feel comfortable in accessing, viewing and engaging with your work. Setting up a repository in a way that lowers the barriers to entry and the fear of being an outsider is the first step towards maintaining a successful project. So, the first step which you want to do is to set up a GitHub profile. To do this, simply head to the main page here and click sign up for GitHub. As you can see, you have several uh, options here just to fill out your username, your email address, and your password as you need. The next step, step two, choosing your plan will be up to you, but the best thing to do is just set up a personal plan. For now, simply select the unlimited public repositories for free plan, unless you are concerned about privacy, in which case select the private plan. If you intend to set up a project for an organization, you can select that option too. So one of the most confusing things about GitHub and possibly one of the most off-putting aspects of it is that it has its own language. It has a range of commonly used terms, each with their own definitions, which are not really used um, in any other software out there. So while at the moment, at this stage, it's best not to worry about this or try and focus on memorizing all of the different definitions, um, what it's best to bear in mind is that like with, any le le like with learning any new skill, familiarity will come with, um, with experience. So once you've created your new profile and logged in, you'll come to the main splash page here. From here, you want to click here where it says new repository. And this is how to launch a new project on your new GitHub profile. Click there and it'll take you to this page here. Now, the first step which you need to bear in mind is that you need to create a name, which will be the brand for your project. Ideally, it should be memorable and give some indication of what the project does. For now, we'll just create one called Open Science. Here, you want to make sure not to duplicate names or infringe upon any other trademarks or name it anything that could be considered to be offensive. Once you've decided a name for your repository, decide whether you want it to be public or private for now, and make sure to click here where it says initialize this project with a readme. More on that later. For now, don't worry about adding a license or the git ignore file. And then click create repository. Now, typically, any GitHub repository requires four key elements to get started and to begin developing a welcoming community. These are having an open source license, a readme file, contributing guidelines, as well as a code of conduct. These are critical aspects and best practices of any project for users to understand their legal rights, their expectations, the purpose of the project, and to improve the overall user experience. All four of these files should be kept in the root directory for your project repository. It is conventional to use markdown file formats. These are ones which end in .md for most of these, though the license file can also just be plain text. And as well as that, it's important just to capitalize the file names just for convention. Instead of spaces as well in these file names, make sure to use underscores as this makes them easier to read. So at this stage, all we have is a blank readme file. But for the other three, it's very easy to create these. Click create new file and it will take you to, to this page and simply add these in. If you want to create contributing guidelines, just call it contributing.md. Scroll down where it says commit new file and then just click commit for now. You don't need to worry about adding any extra text. Okay, 
do the same thing for creating a code of conduct. Here, it gives you the option to choose a code of conduct template. If we click that, we can see that it gives you two options, the citizen code of conduct or the contributor covenant. Which, are, which one of these you decide upon with is best for your project is down to the individual. We, for the Open Science MOOC, we use the Contributor Code of Covenant, which is fit for most purposes. Click Review and Submit once you've read this through. Scroll down again and commit that new file. The final file that we want to create is the license. So again, click Create a New File and type in license.md. As before with the Code of Conduct, this will come up here on the top right where you're allowed to choose a pre-existing license template. Click there and you'll see what it gives you is a, a range of different options here for your li for licensing for your project. So this is important because choosing an appropriate license is what will differentiate your open source repository from publicly available software, as we heard about before. So while you are not obliged to choose a license, doing so guarantees that others will be able to modify, share, reuse, and build upon your project all within a legal framework. If you want to learn more about this, the choose a license tool is very useful uh, in helping to guide you towards finding a, um, a license that suits your intentions for your project. Three of the most commonly used ones are the GNU General Public License, a copyleft license that requires anyone to redistribute your code or a derivative work to make the source code available under the same terms as the original license and also provide an express grant of patent rights from contributors to users. Others include the Apache License 2.0, which has similar permissions to the MIT license, but also provides an express grant of patent rights from contributors to authors. And the MIT license is a very permissive license that lets people do whatever they want with your code, as long as they provide attribution to you and do not hold you liable. Thankfully, when you start a new pr project on GitHub, you're given the option to select an existing license from the drop-down menu. You should always use an existing license, since this is what potential users and contributors will see before they choose to use or contribute to your software. So for now, let's click the GNU General Public License that will populate this area here with the text. You can read that if you wish and then click Review and Submit. Again, that will take you now to this page where it's created the file automatically for you. If you scroll down to the bottom, click here, commit directly to the master branch, commit the new file. After this, you should now have the four foundational files for creating any successful pro project up here on GitHub. For the license, just a final note, if they don't have the one that you want, you can add one that you prefer manually. To do this again, simply click Create New File in the repository and copy and paste an existing license text in, such as those from Creative Commons. Name the file something like license.txt or license.md, just to make it absolutely clear, and keep it in the main repository folder, also called the root. Make sure to add a clean commit message if you wish, and then you're done. Now, what you might notice is that in the root directory for your project, it automatically displays here the readme file. Now, when you initialize the, your new repository, like we saw before, there should be an option to do so by automatically adding a readme file. So this is just like Alice in Wonderland. These do exactly what they say. They provide key information about the project. And they are typically the first thing that outside, it, outside con contributors will see when they come to your repository. So making them informative and welcoming is key. What you'll see in the readme file is just the project title for now. The file will be originally be written in markdown format. This is the .md. This is a very simple, lightweight markup language with a plain text format. Uh, for now, we can just use plain text though. So what we want to do is click the little pen button here, and that will open up the editor for this file. As you can see, the syntax here is very simple. If you want a first level heading, you just use a simple hash. There are quite a few simple commands here, but we can get to those at a different point. For an informative readme file, there are several things at this stage that you'll want to include. For example, what is this project about and what does it do? Why should people care and why is it useful? How can someone get started contributing to the project? Who can be contacted in case someone needs help or wants to learn more? Include a link to the license, the contributing guidelines and the code of conduct. Give a brief description of the project structure, as well as describe who is involved and what their roles are. As well as that, it's usually nice to give the current state of the project. Later on, as your project develops, you might want to add some FAQs here based on community feedback or something like a tutorial to help users understand how your project works. Remember at this stage that not everyone coming to your project is going to be an expert or understand what it is you're doing and why. 
Having a really well documented README file will enhance the user experience for people with a range of prior knowledge. When the README file is included in the root directory, GitHub will automatically display this on the homepage of your repository. This means it's the first thing people will often see when they come to your project, so make it count. If you want to see what an existing README file looks like, you can check the, the file used for this MOOC module. This includes information on the status of the module, the rationale, the learning outcomes, the development team, key documents, and the license to help. If you want, you can copy and paste and adapt this structure for your own projects as needed. Once you've completed writing your readme file, navigate back to your root directory here. The next thing which we want to work on are the contributing guidelines. Contributing guidelines are designed to communicate to potential contributors a short guide on how to engage with your project and community. You, you want to make sure that it's welcoming and indicate that you're eager for participants to engage with your project. Whenever a participant opens up a new pull request or creates a new issue, they will see a link to your contributing file. So, if we navigate to cont the contributing file, again all in caps and in markdown. Remember, this file will tell other users how they can engage with and participate in your project. This is the first step towards establishing a real community around your project, so make it engaging, concise and informative. As with the readme file before, if you click the little pen button, that should enable you to edit this file. The contributing file should ideally include information on the sort of contributions that you're looking for, how to suggest updates or new features, how to interact with the project using GitHub's functions, such as the pull request protocol, how to file a bug report or create an issue, the ultimate goal, vision or roadmap for the project, how to contact those in charge of the project again, as well as links to any external documentation or websites. If you want to do something really great, consider starting off with a short thank you note for people for taking the time to consider contributing. They've clearly clicked this file to learn more about your project after all, and if there are other methods of recognition that you have in mind, make sure to include them here too. Here, you're essentially trying to encourage people to volunteer their time to advance your project, so really make sure to be welcoming and friendly, and be precise about how people can engage. When writing this, try and think about it from the user perspective too. How can you make their life easier when submitting pull requests and opening issues to make the whole project run more smoothly? Again, if you want, you can check out the contributing guidelines for the MOOC, which include some very specific things uh, dedicated to the project. For example, an introduction to using Git and GitHub, tips for getting started, our contact information, how to alter the content and report issues, as well as a link to the readme file and information on the preferred content and code styles. Again, feel free to copy and adapt this for your own project as needed. Back in the root directory, the final file which we want to take a look at is the code of conduct. A code of conduct is important for setting the ground rules for expected behavior and participation for project contributors, and is an easily referenced document for showing that your project team takes constructive dialogue seriously. Therefore, it is a critical element for creating and maintaining a healthy community that engages in a constructive and productive manner within a positive social atmosphere. A code of conduct not only provides expectations of behavior, but also describes who those expectations apply to, when they apply, what to do should a violation of the code of conduct occur, and what the action items for this will be. As such, points of contact need to be made clear in the code of conduct. Typically, this should be done in a private way, such as an email address. In some special cases, a violation might need to be reported about the person themselves who receives these reports, so make sure to include an option to contact a secondary party if possible. As you can see, we already have the contributor code of covenant here, which we generated automatically before. There are other existing ones out there which you can use if this one isn't to your standard. Making sure to enforce the code of conduct is important, as it shows that not only do you value the code, but you respect the influence that it has on your community. It is important to treat each member of the community with respect, courtesy, and the importance that they deserve. Should a violation occur, or a repeat offender make consistent violations, it is best to refer to something such as the open source guide to see how to enforce the code of conduct. The final thing which we want to look at now is the issue tracker. Click on issues here. As you can see, it has no issues for now because we haven't opened any new ones. Now, issues are not necessarily problems with the project, but also suggestions for improvement, things to develop in the future, as well as comments and feedback about the project to work through. They can be openly shared and discussed with contributors as needed, sort of like a discussion forum. If you're a project lead, it is important to maintain a list of issues that make it clear to contributors which aspects of the project need most attention. It is also important to engage with as many issues as possible from others in a positive manner to show that you take their contributions seriously. For now, 
let's let's create a new issue. As you can see, it comes very simply with a title as well as the comment itself. Key elements for issues include an informative title and description here, as well as color-coded labels and tags, which you can apply here on the right. Milestones to associate with specific features or project phases, assignees to indicate who is responsible for working on an issue, as well as additional comments for providing feedback. Within issues, it's also possible to use that the at symbol for mentions to notify other contributors about the issue and to make sure that you get the right people engaged in an effective manner. GitHub has an internal system of notifications, very similar to something like Facebook or Twitter, and can also send emails to people who are mentioned in the issue tracker. This can all be customized for individuals within the user settings. So that was the basics to set up a GitHub repository or project, and now you should be ready to launch and maybe begin advertising and getting contributions. Before going any further, make sure that you have a memorable informative name for your project, that the project itself has an appropriate license file and an exact copy of an open source license, complete documentation, including a readme, contributing file and code of conduct. Make sure that the project has at least one clearly labeled issue for people coming from the outside and making sure that any code that you've included at this stage is clearly structured and annotated. Well, congratulations. So you should now have just launched your first open source research project. Hopefully, from here on out, your work will act to benefit the wider community, forge new collaborations, and create new and fantastic opportunities for you all. Try and think about the ways in which these skills can be applied to your own future projects and how they might have also helped with others in the past. So from now on, it's all down to you. Some advice is to make sure that you write clean code and have a well-structured project. Make sure to make frequent project commits with very clear messages and keep your projects well documented. Have clear contributing guidelines and make sure that you use the description and the tag functions appropriately to make it easier for other people to contribute. Don't fork somebody else's repository too unless you intend to work on them. Forking is basically copy and pasting and it's not good to do that unless you actually intend to provide some sort of additional contribution. And as well as that, make sure that you contribute to other people's projects too. That's the open source way. So thank you all for listening. We hope this was informative and most importantly, have fun.